big Ooh, because that's one of my favorites. Yeah, can you please speak on this? So for people listening, it says hindsight, foresight, and insight. And the hindsight's perfect vision. Foresight's a little blurry. Insight is very blurry. And we talk a lot about like self talk and then mm-hmm. like self belief and then also manifesting. But I just wanted you to go a little bit deeper on insight and what you mean with this. Yeah, that's one of my most popular. I actually reposted that from a few years back because I did a video about it. So hindsight, right? That's basically knowing what's already transpired. I could have did that. I should have did that. What if? We can see that perfectly, right? Because mm-hmm. obviously it already happened, so it's easy to call back to it. Yeah. So that's the you see the eye chart, so it's clear. Now the second one, foresight, that's what could happen. What could I do? What could be? What should I do? So we're good at planning things out, whether it's positive or negative. Some people can say, oh, I'm going to go on a trip, or I'm going to win a championship, or going to get married, whatever it is. Or they'll do the opposite. Man, I don't know if I'm going to win. I might fail. So whatever it is, they can see that slightly clear, but it's not perfect because we don't know what's going to happen. It's still a, a question mark. Yeah. And then the last one, <laughs> kind of ironic, insight. The one thing that we have direct momentary control over is the blurious. And it's usually because we're so busy on what already happened and what could happen. So we just ignore what's happening in the moment. And it's like, it's not saying you shouldn't have hindsight or, or foresight. You should, because in order to get better right now, I have to reflect on things I did wrong. Mm-hmm. But how much are you emphasizing it? That's the question I'll ask a client or someone. If I'm only lingering on the loss or on, only lingering on the mess up, how much can that get me better after, say, 24 hours? I say the first day or two, linger on it a little bit because you want to reflect. But after that, let it go and rebuild. And then with foresight, you can't control outcomes. I know that sounds ridiculous because if you say, of course I can. If I work hard and just do my best, I'm going to win. So, oh, I'll ask, do you win every race or every meet or every fight or every job opportunity? No. No. Oh, so you choose to lose. No. So (laughs) what did you really control? Obviously, going back to the circle of control, you have influence. My hard work can influence the outcome, whether it's the referee, whether it's the the boss at a new job I'm trying to get. You have to have influence, but we can't completely see it. And then insight, that should be the the clear as the hindsight, because that's the only thing you can directly in this moment change. So that's that one. I, I, I like that a lot. I think it'd be helpful to make it more, you can make it more clear by asking questions. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that in the gym a little bit. Um, Rather than, you know, rather than thinking about all the shit that you didn't do correctly with hindsight, you can just turn those into question marks and say, I I wonder how I could, Mm -hmm. could handle that better. I wonder how I could progress a little faster. Maybe I'll start asking my coach. Maybe I'll ask my mentor. Maybe I'll ask my teacher how I can do a little bit better. How can I get my grade up? How can I, all these things. And it just gives you a lot more options when you are inquisitive, which sounds like Dustin Poye was doing with you um, he, he, to gain that knowledge so that he can have a more clear picture of everything that was going to happen. Yeah. And I actually had a little thing I do when I do workshops. I call it the diamond mindset because, you know, he's a diamond. And he had a series of things he did on top of, you know, being inquisitive, open minded. But he also always spoke in a, like you said, asked the questions. He spoke like that. It wasn't necessarily like guaranteed. He's he's open with this. He said this in interviews uh, numerous times on like he does feel that like that doubt or whatever. It's just like, I, but I know I'm the best man for this job. He's not better than me in the sense of I know what I bring. So that's that balance of confidence versus people who have false confidence like he's not saying it out of i'm the best it's saying is like i did what it takes to be the best and he talks it like whether i'm hanging around him when we used to work more frequently during when like he's training for other things like sparring whatever you'll see him saying things relevant to being better not necessarily dominating in the sense of i got this automatically but it's like building that mindset of these are the words these are the thoughts that go into being dominant and being better so that that has to be practiced like any skill. I hate to keep using the physical reference, but it's very similar. I can't get stronger at a squat or a bench or whatever unless I do a squat or a bench. Mm-hmm. I can't just hope it gets better because I, I want it. But with this, some some reason, it goes out the window. And I actually have an analogy I use for this um, because I look at it as there's there's passive aspects of going about like mental performance or mental health, and there's more active, just like with physical. So passive's like, you know, the apps like uh, Calm, mm-hmm. yeah. Headspace, Box Breathing, things like that, meditation, mindfulness, all great. Definitely useful. I get my clients to do it. Definitely something I personally practice. But that's passive. So imagine in fitness or strength conditioning, if I only do mobility work, I only do stretches, Okay, I'm flexible. I can get into a position, but how resilient is my body in the actual load? That's where the actual strength conditioning stuff comes in. So same thing with mental. Okay, you do the box breathing. You do the mindful work. You're you're doing the self-talk task. Great. We need that because that builds that foundation. But how do you hold up when there's an actual 
mental stressor or cognitive stressor in front of you. And that's where those drills we talked about earlier and they showed on the screen, that's where that can be trained. Because I always break it down to people is we can see in real time, because it's a good thing they know how our brain processes and handles stress from a neuroscience side. We need that. But we can see in real time from some of these tasks, how do you actually hold up when things go wrong or you mess up? And how do you recalibrate or not? Hey, guys, if you like this clip, go ahead and comment down below and let us know what you liked about it. All right. Share this with a friend. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And also, we are on Reddit and Discord. All that's down below. All our sponsors and everyone that supports us, down below there too, so you can get whatever you like from us. All right? Peace.